Hey everybody. I wanted to try out a new series here. Uh, you know, looking at some of my favorite YouTubers, looking at people like Pro Jared and The Completionist, and looking at how I can take my love of gaming and kind of combine the two things that they do, the you know, some of the best. Um, and that's going to be, you know, doing a little bit of a review on a game and then going over the achievements uh, through retroachievements.org that are available and you know maybe helping out some of you guys along the way with some of the more difficult achievements that games may offer with that being said let's get into, into our first episode of retro achievement review Immediately upon turning on your Super Nintendo, you're greeted with the Triforces coming together to make the now iconic Triforce of Wisdom, Power, and Courage together, forming this title screen where a sword just comes in and blazes through the Z. You knew that this was going to be amazing. Our story begins with Link. He's asleep in his house, and he's awoken by Princess Zelda saying that she desperately needs his help, as the, the evil wizard Aghanim has done something to the other maidens of the land, and that he's attempting to open the wise men's seal. Your uncle says that he's going to go out and attempt to rescue the princess. He takes his sword and shield, you grab your trusty lamp, and you too head on after him. After doing a little bit of exploring outside of the castle, you fall into the sewers next to the castle, where you find your, your uncle gravely wounded. He hands you your sword and shield, and you're now on your way. You make your way through the castle, find Princess Zelda, and leave. Well, you actually do end up saving her. <laughs> and, you know, as a kid, I was like, oh man, we already rescued the princess. Okay, we're going to get out of here, we're going to kill this guy, we're gonna, it's going to be over. You head into the throne room where she helps you move the hearth, and you head on into the sewers behind the castle, where you find all kinds of different snakes, bats, rats, and then you make, finally make your way to the sanctuary. Princess Zelda is now safe, and this is where you discover that you're going to have a much larger quest. As you find a man named Sahasrala, he instructs you to obtain the pendants of courage, wisdom, and power. After obtaining the three pendants, this is what happens. That's right, the Master Sword. Up until this point, the Legend of Zelda series had not had the iconic sword that we know of today. When I was a kid and I first got this sword, first off, I just went around killing pretty much everything because I could. I was like, man, this thing is really powerful because it does so much more damage than what my little dinky uncle sword was doing. But then, little did I know, I wasn't even halfway through the game. So eventually you head back to the castle to confront the evil wizard Aghanim. Upon climbing his tower, this is what happens. You see Zelda on an altar. And she's gone. Aghanim won. So you chase him back to his room, where you fight Aghanim, and upon defeating him, he too sends you to the Dark World. Now the adventure has begun once again. So you head through the Dark World, collecting crystals, 
each of the crystals is actually one of the maidens that was originally sent to the Dark World by Aghanim. The maidens inform you that Ganon, upon touching the Triforce, had created a corrupted version of the Light World. So you go around collecting a bunch of different upgrades to further yourself in your quest, collecting crystals. And then the battle finally comes and draws near. The power of the seven crystals, you're able to enter Ganon's tower. This is it. It's time for you to face the ult your ultimate foe. Upon climbing up all the floors within the tower, you find Aghanim once again. Upon defeating Aghanim, you see the vision of your true foe, Ganon. As he turns into a bat and flies away, you give chase. He crashes into the pyramid upon where you came to the Dark World. And then you fall down and enter the final battle. And, you know, looking at this battle, looking back at it, man, it can be really hard if you didn't know strats like, you know, what I'm showing you right here with the cape. I mean, he does a ton of damage. He has all kinds of stuff flying across the screen. You have mechanics of having to, to light uh, the, the sconces to break his his dark powers and then it's over you, you, you did it you you won and for the final time the triumphant fanfare plays and you enter the triforce room and you're you're greeted with the triforce itself the Triforce itself actually tells you more about the story, even after Ganon is destroyed. And you've just finished one of one of the, you know, arguably one of the best games that's ever been made. You know, one thing that I always thought was really awesome about this game is in the epilogue, while it's doing this, this fanfare, you know, you're greeted with all the NPCs that you've met along the way. And you get to see what's kind of happened to all of them. Uh, you get to see what happened to the guy in the sanctuary, where if you went to the sanctuary before going to fight Aghanim the first time, you would have seen that he was dead. Uh, the, the priest that was dead. I have also, also, just a random note. I have no idea why the forest thief is of note here. But then at the end of it all, you find out that the master sword sleeps again. This time forever. Or until they make another Zelda game that's going to require the Master Sword. But, you know, either way, it was quite impactful in 1991. And then you're led with this amazing overture. An amazing end to an amazing game. Now, let's see how the achievements look on this thing. Alrighty, quick disclaimer for the Retro Achievement Review. I'll only be reviewing games that I have mastered on RetroAchievements.org. So there will be a link in the description below that will have a list of all of the different games that I have mastered. If there is a game that you would like me to cover in a future video, make sure that you comment on this video with it, and maybe I'll choose yours on one of the future videos. Uh, while you're doing that, you might as well go ahead and like and subscribe on the, you know, to the channel as well, right? Uh, with that being said, let's get back to it. Okay, so for looking at this achievement set right off the bat, most of them can be obtained by just completing the game and collecting every item. There is a total of 55 achievements worth 435 points. However, since we only play on hardcore mode, that's going to be for 870 points. Now, none of them are really all that bad. The ones that may give people a lot of trouble are the ones here, which are doing all of the different bosses in the game damage list. So that means not taking any damage whatsoever while fighting the boss. I'm going to show you how to obtain all of these achievements with some miscellaneous tips mixed in as well. First up, we have the Armos Knights. 
Now they are easily dispatched by sitting here in the lower right hand corner and using the bow and arrow. Hitting each of them with three arrows, you can go ahead and take them out. After you've dispatched a couple and you see them start to move towards the center, kind of move out of their way, typically to the lower left. After you've dispatched all but one, you'll notice that the last one is going to move very quickly. Here's a little tip, in the event that you run out of arrows, you can actually use the boomerang. Now hitting an Armos Knight with the boomerang 16 times is the equivalent of hitting it with one arrow. Keep it up and the Armos Knights will go down and you'll have yourself an achievement. Next up, we have Land Molus. But first things first, let's head to the east of Lake Hylia before heading to Desert Palace, because we're going to make our life a little bit easier. I'm gonna go into a cave and grab the Ice Rod. Then you head to Desert Palace, equip yourself with the Ice Rod and prepare for the fight. As Land Molus appears, you want to line yourself up directly underneath and shoot the Ice Rod, preferably timing it to hit him. Whenever Land Molus comes out of the ground, they shoot their rocks in an X pattern from where they emerged. So make sure that you see where all of them are emerging and move accordingly. It only takes two Ice Rod hits to take down one of the Land Molus. When you get down to the last Land Molus, you want to watch out because now that that X pattern actually turns into an eight pattern, you're going to have a rock shooting off in all of the diagonals as well as the four cardinal directions. So be very careful of this. And on top of that, not only do the rocks come up and although they are projectiles and you can block almost every projectile in the game with your shield, this is one of the ones that you cannot. So you want to be very careful when dealing with the land molas. Try to use the ice rod. In the event that you run out of magic, you can switch to the bow and arrow, which is actually the strat that is used during speed runs as well. And you can try to hit it with your sword, and you can also hit it with the bow and arrow. Now what you wanna do is you actually want to get in that little negative space in between where each of the rocks go, and that's how you can go ahead and get your damage in on Land Molus. Keep up a little bit more damage, and you'll take him down. Oh, Moldorm. So Moldorm is one of those bosses that appears to not have very much of a pattern. However, he's very manipulatable, and he, you can actually do this fight quite easily. The trick is to stand in this open area, let Moldorm come towards you, and right before he's about to get you, he'll always do a little turn back. So just hold your sword out away from him, and then you can do a spin strike to attack the weak spot that he goes ahead and just sends right at you, making it very simple. You can also bounce your sword off of his face in the event that he does get, you know, kind of too close to you. You really want to stay away from the left side of this arena, though. Now, in the event that you happen to fall off, the really good thing about this achievement is that the process doesn't reset. So if you did get hit, just fall off the, the right and then you can come back up and try again. So once again, you just aim, he comes at you, does a little circle, and you can go ahead and attack whenever you feel like it. Now, the only time he's going to bounce and change directions is in the event that he runs out of platform to run on. So that's why you wanna stay kind of in the open area and just strike when you see the opening, he comes at you, spins, you strike. Rinse, wash, repeat until the fifth time you hit him. Now, once you hit him the fifth time, he moves much quicker. Now, here's a trick that you can do. You can actually dash through him and you won't take any damage. Usually what I will do is I'll go back and forth and just kind of dash in this little area right here and usually get the kill. So long, Moldy. Okay, here's a quick little bonus tip on how to get some money. Up here by the old man cave, you can kill any enemy, pull on the, pull on the tree and you'll get 20 rupees. Then between pulling on the tree and pulling the next tree, you're gonna wanna kill four enemies. So we kill the crow, we can kill one of these little slime dudes. You can use either a bow and arrow or you can throw two bushes at him, whichever one's the easiest for you to do. I typically go ahead and they kill this next slime guy. Then we kill this crow. And so that's our fourth enemy. You wanna do this all without getting hit. I walk past this hedge guy and I'm gonna pull on this tree to get another 80 rupees. Quick and easy way for me to get another 100 rupees total. 
Another fact, you can pull on the one by the castle to get yet another 80 rupees if you don't get hit. Okay, so Aghanim is one of the most frustrating in the event that you fail the achievement. Because if you do fail, you have to go all the way up his tower again. So, let's not fail. So Aghanim can throw two different types of balls. He'll throw a white ball, or he'll throw a blue ball. Now, he does a pattern where he'll throw four of, four of the balls. After he's thrown four of them, he will shoot lightning down from the center. When he goes to shoot lightning, you go up at the top and you can avoid him. The first one he throws at you and the first one for each pattern is always a white ball 100% of the time. So you can definitely get in one hit every single cycle. After that, there's that 50% chance that it's going to be a blue ball. So what you want to do is stay far away from him. So in the event that it's a blue one, you can react accordingly. Because not only are the blue ones not reflectable, they actually home in on you as well. So they will actually curve a little bit and go towards you. Just keep up your focus and he'll go down in six hits. Now, after you've defeated Aghanim, we have a lot of item collections to do before we finish any other dungeons. This will help us with all of the damageless achievements left. So we're going to grab the Quake Medallion. We're going to grab Flippers. We're going to grab the Hammer out of Palace of Darkness. We're going to grab the Hookshot out of the Swamp Palace. We're going to head and grab the Flute from the Flute Kid. We're going to activate it in the Kakariko. We're going to grab the mushroom if we didn't already grab it and get the magic dust. We're going to grab the fire rod. We're going to grab the titan's mitts. We're going to get half magic. And then we're going to temper our sword. Then we're going to get the magic cape from the graveyard and finally ether. And now we are ready to continue on our damageless bosses. Okay, the next boss we want to take on is Mothula, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But after we've gotten all of the item collections, we go and we face Mothula. Really easy. When you pop down into Mothula's room, use the cape, attack Mothula. Try not to hit Mothula towards the spikes, because the damage won't count that way, so try to hit Mothula towards the inside of the room. Really easy fight. Easy achievement. Next, we have Cold Stair. When the fight first begins, you're going to want to hit Cold Stair eight times with the Fire Rod. Watch out for the Falling Ice, and then switch to the Magic Cape. Now, a funny bug with the Magic Cape, if you are holding on to something, so if you're holding on to the walls, and you are trying to pull it by pressing the A button, it actually will not use up any of your magic. So bide your time till you want to attack, then attack Cold Stare. In the event that you do run out of magic, get as far away from whatever Cold Stare part is left, use a bottle to get back magic, go back into the cape, and reap your rewards. Next, we have the easiest one so far, Vitreous. What you do is enter the room, use the magic cape, and then run through the eyes back and forth. It takes six hits or six passes with the cape to kill all of the eyes. Then get below and shoot eight arrows into the big eyeball as it comes towards you. Easy fight, easy points. Now, for the reason that we did those two bosses is so that we could go ahead and enter the pyramid and get the silver arrows and the gold sword. Quick little tip on getting back to there using this big bomb is just use the mirror right here, go across towards the castle, and then you're right back where you need to be. Blow up the pyramid, throw your sword and your, your arrows in, and reap the rewards. Now it is time for the second most difficult fight for damageless achievements in my opinion, Helmosaur. So first things first, Helmosaur will occasionally shoot these fireballs out. When he does, one of the three, typically I believe it's the closest one to you, will explode. Then they will go in a clockwise fashion and they will also explode, just as you see here. 
Now, the thing that makes Helmosaur difficult is you cannot use the cape because you need the hammer. So hold your sword out and hammer right when your sword would tink. Now watch for the tail, because when the tail starts moving fast, it's going to come down and try to hit you. Just try to stay really close to Helmosaur. This fight can be frustrating. Once you've broken the mask, grab the cape, hit Helmosaur twice with your gold sword, and you've got yourself an achievement. Now for another achievement that does not use the cape, we have Argus. So the trick to Argus, you can do a couple of different ways. One, you can have your sword out and then use your hookshot while your sword's out and your poke damage from the gold sword will automatically kill the little puffs that come off or you can grab one and attack. The trick is don't move towards him when you're using the hookshot and you'll never get hit by pulling one towards you as it's shown here. After you've gone ahead and got the rest of them, you can use the cape just to be sure as he's going to drop down on you. If you're scared, just go ahead, use the cape. And he's dead. Next, we have Blind. Now this boss can be really tough, but we have the cape. So he's nine hits. You hit him three times, grab the wall like we talked about while using the cape, hit him another three times, grab the wall while using the cape, go ahead and hit him. You guessed it, three times, Blind's dead. Really easy achievement. Now remember when I said that we would kill Mothula earlier for a reason? Well, there's actually a bug in A Link to the Past, where if you have the gold sword, you can't do any damage to Mothula. So this is why, or this is just, a, just some footage of me actually figuring this out, because I didn't know this was a thing until I was uh, recording footage for this video. This is after I ran out of magic and couldn't cape anymore, and was wondering what was going on. As you can see, don't be like me. Do it with the tempered sword. Okay, it's time for the toughest boss on this Chivo set. Try next. Now, you're going to want to grab the ice rod. Get ready right off the bat. With the gold sword, we can actually kill the fire before it even becomes a problem. Switch to the fire rod, but once again, watch that tail. When that tail starts waggling fast, you're going to want to move out from the head. You can cape really quick to avoid it, but don't count on the cape because if there's explosions happening from one of the heads dying, you won't be able to switch into your different items. So then switch to the fire rod while being careful. Try to avoid the ice as much as possible. Then take out the heads. Watch for the head coming at you once again with that fast tail. After you've gone ahead and you've killed the other head, you can, you can go ahead and open up and grab your cape once the explosion stops, and you can go ahead and finish off Trinex. One thing to note with Trinex is make sure that right by where you got the last key of the dungeon, if you blow up the wall to the bottom, leave and come back. That way, if you fail, you can start right there. And lastly on this list, we have the king himself, Ganon. Sadly, Ganon's really easy. What strat do you think we're gonna use? Well, I'll give you a hint. We're gonna use the cape. <laughs> so we go ahead, use the cape, hit him a bunch. You don't even have to pay attention to how many times you hit him, honestly, because your cape is going to last for so long. Once you see the fire ring come around him like this, you know you're in phase two. By the time you get he gets done doing this phase two portion, you've definitely hit him enough. Then go ahead and hit him once per time he jumps. Right here is a great time to use a magic bottle to fill up your magic if you need it. Just get wherever he's teleporting to, hit him as soon as he gets there and he'll never shoot fire at you. Now, when it comes to phase three, he's, you're, you're almost there. So on the fourth hit, it's going to start phase three. I guess it's technically phase four. 
but you want to go ahead you can grab the cape first to be sure because you can get in a quick you can get in a quick one hit so cape hit him then you can go ahead and switch to your silver arrows get in one silver arrow now switch to your lamp and light both of these sconces and you're just going to want to hit him right when he appears and use the silver arrow if you're feeling really skittish, you can go ahead and switch to the cape after every time when you light the two sconces. Just keep your magic up, keep focused, and finish off this Chivo set. I knew you could do it. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Whenever I think of this game, I'm instantly transported back to a time of my childhood where I would just fully immersed in this game, trying to figure out what to do, and then, you know, getting that sense of accomplishment of, you know, getting the pendants, getting the Master Sword. Oh man, I, I get all these crystals! And you know what, you know, really thinking back on it, it's probably one of my first great gaming achievements that I can think of. Because, you know, I had played through the original Legend of Zelda, and I remember having to contact Counselor's Corner to get through the second quest, to, you know, basically to find out that some walls you can walk through, uh, you know, to, to completely finish that game. And I remember doing this game 100% on my own. You know, this was before the internet, and it just, it just stuck with me of how amazing this story was i hope you guys enjoyed this this review and kind of a you know not only just the review of the game but the achievement side of it too uh as retro achievements have really re-instilled that love of gaming and figuring things out for me so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can catch me live on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash dancarnate. And remember, if there's a video that you'd like to see, take a look at that mastery list and leave a comment down below. Other than that, have yourselves a great day.